Hey, Cindy, did you hear about the exhibition going on this week? Which one, John? The one that's going on at the mountain park? Yeah, that one. Well, I heard there was something going on there on Thursday and Friday, but I don't know much about it. Why? Oh, well, it is a cool exhibition. There is going to be a snowboard half pipe show, ski jumping, and downhill ski races. We were wondering if you wanted to come? Hmm. Well, I am pretty busy on those days. Plus, I don't really like mountain sports. Thanks anyway, though. Oh, okay. No worries. There is also another exhibition going on at the beach this summer. Would you be interested in that? Totally. I love beach sports. When is it? I don't know the exact details yet. I'll call you when I know more. Does that sound okay? Sounds great. Thanks, John. Mary, why do you look so happy? Hi, Dave. I'm happy because I just got a hundred percent on my business class assignment. Wow. What was the assignment on? We all had to set up and run pretend internet businesses, and my business did great. What kind of business was it? It was an online bookshop. Customers bought books and magazines from our website, and we sent them to their homes. That sounds like a cool idea. Were there any specific reasons it was so successful? According to my teacher, the business had three main strong points. A strong work team, good organization, and cost efficiency. It sounds like you would be a really good business owner. Thanks. I want to be an entrepreneur when I grow up. I can't believe it. This is insane. Dean, you have to come see this. Lauren, what are you so excited about? I just won the lottery. What do you mean you won the lottery? I mean, I just won the lottery. Look at the TV. What does it say? It says the winning lottery ticket number is one two eight four six. Now look at this lottery ticket. What does it say? One two eight four six. See, I can't believe this. The prize is only five thousand dollars, but this is still exciting. Wow. Lauren, five thousand dollars? That is amazing. What are you going to do with the money? Hmm. Well, I'm going to invest most of it with the bank. That way, the money will grow. That's smart. Will you buy anything? Hmm. I'll buy some new clothes and a new cell phone. But that's it. Good idea. You should have a little fun. Well, congratulations. Hello, kids. My name is Douglas Fontaine, and I am a successful business owner and entrepreneur. I started my first business when I was 14 years old. My mother is from Korea, and my dad is from here in the U.S. One time, I was visiting my cousins in Seoul and had an idea. There was a store in my cousin's neighborhood that sold really cool toys. I knew that many kids back in the U.S. would want to buy them, so I bought thirty of the toys and brought them back to the U.S. The toys were very popular, and I sold all of them in one week. I had an idea. I asked my cousins to buy one hundred toys and send them in the mail. I sold them all in a few months. It was then I realized. That I could make a lot of money buying things from one country and selling them in another. When I got older, I remembered that experience and set up a business between Korea and America. My company is called Korean American Import and Export. It has been a great success and a wonderful opportunity to do business with the two countries that I love. Tamara. Are you reading one of those trashy celebrity magazines again, Dad? They aren't trashy. They're fun, and I like them. Why do you like reading about celebrities so much? I don't know. I guess it's fun to read about rich and famous people. 
I like to imagine what it's like to be a celebrity. Just remember that celebrity life is not always great. Celebrities have a lot of problems, too. What problems do celebrities have? The public criticizes and judges everything they do. When they make a mistake, everyone knows about it. Okay. And what else? They never have any real privacy. Every time they go out in public, the paparazzi take pictures of them for those silly magazines of yours. Hmm. I guess that would be annoying. Very annoying. So you should just be happy to be yourself and not worry about trying to be like any silly celebrities. Okay, Dad. Have you ever heard of Oprah Winfrey? She is one of the most successful and famous women celebrities of all time. Her story is an inspiration to us all. Today, she is worth billions of dollars, but Oprah certainly did not start out that way. Oprah started at the bottom, and she worked her way up to the top. She was born in 1954 in Mississippi to a poor family. She had a lot of problems growing up, including abuse at home. That didn't stop Oprah from becoming successful, though. She worked hard and got a job at a radio station when she was still in high school. People quickly noticed Oprah's ability to communicate and offered her a job as a news anchor. In just a few years, she was co hosting a talk show. Then in 1986, she started her own TV talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show. Her show is still on today, and it has become one of the most famous shows in television history. Hey, Sonny, what are you watching? Hey, Neil, I'm watching this program about the extravagant lives of celebrities. Which celebrities is the program talking about? They just finished a piece on the actor Mel Gibson. Apparently, he has a pretty extravagant life. How so? Well, for starters, he owns multi-million dollar homes all over the U.S., Australia, and Costa Rica. Wow. But listen to this. He also owns his own private island in Fiji. How can anyone own an island? Who did he buy it from? It used to be owned by a Japanese corporation. Gibson bought it in 2005. Wow! I would love to have my own island. I don't think you can afford one. How much did Mel Gibson pay for his? Fifteen million dollars. Wow! That is a lot of money. I could never afford that. Me neither. I can barely afford the bus fare to get down to the public beach. Pat, where did you get that silly hat? Hey, Veronica. I got it when I went to the circus yesterday. You went to the circus? I didn't know the circus was in town. Yep. The Farley Brothers Circus was here in Chicago on Saturday and Sunday. Tomorrow they go to Philadelphia. Cool. Where did they perform? At the convention center downtown. I remember when I went and saw the Farley Brothers Circus in New York. It was incredible. They had so many exotic animals and talented acrobats. I had never seen anything like it. What kind of performances did they have this time? Let me try and remember. Oh, yeah. Well, they had a ton of acrobats from China and Africa. They had magicians from France. And they had juggling clowns. One of them could juggle seven balls at once. Wow! Did they have any animals? They had a lot of animals. There were elephants that could stand on two legs, horses that could stand on one leg, and tigers that could jump through hoops. It was awesome. I didn't know animals could do that kind of stuff. It sounds like you had an amazing time. It was one of the most fun things I have ever done. I really want to go again next year. People since ancient Greek and Roman times have enjoyed seeing performances on stages, 
but it wasn't until 1936 that the public got to see exciting shows performed on ice. In 1936, three men named Eddie Shipstad, Roy Shipstad, and Oscar Johnson came up with the idea to combine figure skaters with theater. They used colorful lights. Fancy costumes and exciting music to create a fantastic show. Their creation was called Ice Follies, and the first show was in Oklahoma, USA, on November seventh, nineteen thirty-six. Ice Follies was a huge success, and ice shows quickly became a popular form of entertainment. People loved to watch figure skaters dance and sing. While performing amazing tricks, because of the success of Ice Follies, many other companies began to do ice shows too. They created kids shows, Broadway musicals, and lots of other types of theater on ice. Today, ice shows are no longer just popular in the United States; they are shown in countries all over the world. Hey, Hope. Do you want to come with me to the baseball game? Hey Heath, no thanks. I don't like sports. Plus, my friends and I are going to a concert. A concert? Who is performing? Some band called Yellow Tree. They're a new group. What kind of music do they play? They play rock music. I have only heard them a few times, actually. It's Gina who really likes them. Oh, okay. I don't really know much about rock music. Who is playing in the baseball game? The Tigers are playing the Twins. It should be a really good game. I am pretty excited because it is the first game at the new stadium. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Oh, that should be cool. Well, have fun and good luck to your team. Thanks. I will. Have fun at the concert, and I will see you on Monday. Thanks. See you Monday. Jenny, is that another new cell phone? Yes, Dad, it is. I just got it yesterday. Jenny, why did you get another new cell phone? This is like the fifth one this year. It is not the fifth. It is the fourth, and I needed it. My old one was out of date. Out of date? How could a four-month-old cell phone be out of date? I don't know. It just was. This new one is much better. It has live TV, internet, an MP3 player, a high-quality regular camera, and a video camera. Jenny, your old phone already had all of those things. So seriously, tell me why you needed this one. Well, all my friends have this one. It is the most popular phone at our school. Fine. But you need to stop trying to keep up with all these fads, Jenny. It is costing your mother and me a lot of money. Try and make this phone last at least one year, okay? Okay, Dad. But there is another new phone coming out in a month. That one is going to be even cooler. No, Jenny. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Many of you may remember that last week you took a survey about your feelings towards fads. Well, we received your answers, and we organized the information. So now I will tell you how students in this school feel about fads. The first thing we are going to look at. Is how many of you believe that you follow fads? According to the surveys, seventy-five percent of you said that yes, you do follow fads. Next, let's look at where students believe fads start. According to the surveys, there are four main places where fads start: friends, music, movies. And TV. Now, let's look at why people follow fads. To the question, would you wear something just because a celebrity wore it? Only twenty-five percent of you said yes. But to the question, 
Would you wear something because it was popular at your school? 45% of you said yes. And finally, to the question, are students who follow fads popular? 60% of you said yes. In conclusion, it seems students follow fads to be popular, and they're most influenced by their schoolmates and friends. Hey, Angela. Is that a new MP3 player? What kind of music are you listening to? Hi, Peter. I am not listening to music. I am reading a book. Reading a book? On your MP3 player? This is more than just an MP3 player. It is almost like a mini computer. I can listen to music, watch movies, read books, and surf the internet with it. Wow. My MP3 player can only play music. Peter, you have to get one of these then. They are the coolest things. All of my friends have them now. Oh, yeah? I really want one. When did you get it? I got it for my birthday last month. Hmm. Well, Christmas is coming soon. Maybe I'll ask for one for Christmas. Good idea. You need to get one soon. Because in a few months, your MP3 player will be out of date. Come here, Frank. I want to talk to you about something. What is it, Mom? Am I in trouble? I got a call from your teacher at school today, Frank. Oh, you did? Yes. She is worried about you. She said you missed class three times this week. Did you skip class? Um, uh... Answer me, Frank. Well, uh, what do you mean by skip? You know exactly what I mean. I am asking you if you went to class or not. No, Mom, I didn't. I went to play with my friends. I already know everything for that class anyway. No, you don't, Frank. You failed your last three tests. Fine. I will start going to class, okay? Can I go play with my friends now? Ha! Huh. I don't think so, Frank. You are grounded for one month. One month? That is not fair! Yes, it is. And if I get another call from your teacher, you are grounded for three months. Is that clear? Yes, Mom. Good evening, children and parents. Thank you for coming today. My name is Dr. Carl Frist, and I am a psychologist. As you already know, the topic of tonight's speech is how to deal with conflicts at home. Everyone has small conflicts at home. That is normal. My goal is that you learn how best to deal with small conflicts before they turn into big fights. Big fights are bad and can damage family relationships. The key to dealing with any small conflict is communication. The reason is, the more we listen and talk to each other, the better we understand each other. And the better we understand each other, the less we fight. Think about the last time you got in a fight at home. It probably didn't help your problem. Fighting almost never solves problems, but listening to each other does. In conclusion, if you talk about the problems you are having openly and freely, you will probably be able to resolve them without fighting. And if you can do that, you will have a much better life. Tim, I am worried about our daughter. Which one, Susan? We have three, you know. Well, I worry about all of them, but I want to talk about Sally. What is the problem with Sally? She seems really happy these days. That is kind of the problem. Sally doesn't study enough. All she does is play with her friends, watch TV, and listen to music in her room. Oh, I see. Well, how are her grades in school? She did okay this semester, but if she wants to get into a good university when she is older, 
She needs to learn to study harder and longer. Hmm. Well, how many hours a day does she study now? Probably around one hour per day. How many hours do you think she should study? At least three. That is what I did when I was a student. Okay. Well, let's go talk to her and see what she says. I know she is going to get mad, but we have to tell her. It is for her own good. I agree. Whoa, Beth! What is that thing? Is that ice cream? Hey, Clark! Nope, this is not ice cream. It is a cone pizza. A cone pizza? What is a cone pizza? It is a new fusion food. They took the idea of an ice cream cone and combined it with pizza. Huh? I still don't understand. How can you have an ice cream cone pizza? Okay, listen. They took normal pizza dough, but instead of making a circle, they made it into a cone. Then they filled it with pizza sauce, cheese, and toppings. Finally, they stuck it in the oven. Oh, okay. I think I get it, but that is pretty bizarre. It seems people are making all sorts of weird fusion foods these days. I think the whole thing is weird. How does it taste anyway? It doesn't taste as good as regular pizza, but I like it. The best part is I can walk around with it. Now I can eat pizza when I walk to school. Yeah, I guess it is good when you need to eat while walking. Do you want to try a bite of it? No thanks. I think I will stick to the traditional round pizzas. The Japanese are well known for their unique and weird food flavors. One of the most famous examples of this is found in the Japanese grocery store, specifically in the ice cream section. Yes, Japanese ice cream flavors are some of the most bizarre in the world. Would you like to taste a scoop of fish flavored ice cream? How about squid flavored? Or crab flavored. All three are popular and available in Japan. If you are looking for something healthier, they also sell garlic flavored and seaweed flavored ice cream. I guess that means in Japan you can eat your vegetables and dessert at the same time. If you want to eat your dessert for dinner, that is not a problem either. The Japanese serve bacon flavored and spaghetti flavored ice creams too. Do any of those sound interesting to you? To me, they do. So, personally, on my next visit to Japan, my first stop will be the ice cream parlor. What flavor potato chips are those, Gappy? Hey, Rob, they are ketchup flavored. Do you want to try some? Uh, no thanks. I just like regular flavored potato chips. Ketchup flavored chips sound gross to me. Not me. I love trying new flavors. My dad went to Thailand last year and brought me back the weirdest flavored potato chips I had ever seen. Really? What flavors did he bring back? Um, a lot. Some of the stranger flavors were mayonnaise seafood, grilled lobster, And tuna salad. Whoa, on potato chips? No thanks. What other flavored chips have you tried? When my dad went to Spain last year, he brought back ham flavored chips. Those were pretty weird too. Did you like them? Yeah, I loved them actually. Man, you have sure tried a lot of weird potato chips. Yeah, I know. Trying weird foods has turned into a hobby of mine. Hey, Joey, where were you yesterday? I didn't see you at school. Hey, Tina. I had to go to the optometrist. Why? I have been having trouble seeing things recently. In class, the whiteboard is always blurry, and when I play baseball, I can't see the picture very well. Oh, no. Well, what did the optometrist say? He said I was nearsighted, so I need to start wearing glasses. Nearsighted means you can't see things that are far away, right? Exactly. 
I am going today after school to pick out some glasses. Want to come help me choose a good pair? It would be good to have another person's opinion, so I can find the best looking ones. My mom said I can get whatever glasses I want, even the real expensive and fashionable ones. Sure, sounds like fun. Let's meet at the front entrance after school. Okay, but what time do you think you will be there exactly? Mm, it normally only takes me around 10 minutes to get all my stuff together. Let's meet at 3 40. Does that sound okay? Sounds perfect. See you then. Hi, students. Today, we are going to learn about a few different kinds of doctors. Many of you probably already know that there is more than one kind of doctor. But you might be surprised by just how many there are. In total, There are over 60 different types of doctors, and each type specializes in a few things. Let's look at a few of those types now. The most common type of doctor is a general practitioner. General practitioners are family doctors. They are the first doctor a patient sees, and They treat general sicknesses. Another type of doctor is a cardiologist. Cardiologists are heart doctors. They treat heart disease and people who have had heart attacks. A third type of doctor is a neurologist. Neurologists treat problems of the nervous system. That includes any problem with the brain. Spinal cord, nerves, or muscles. The final type of doctor I will talk about today is an obstetrician. They are pregnancy doctors. They treat women who are pregnant. Mom, there are more. Every day there are more. Jeff, relax. What are you talking about? Zits, Mom. Every day I have more and more zits. You can hardly see my face anymore. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Your face looks fine. It is normal for a kid your age to have a few zits. No, it's not. None of my friends have this many zits. Okay. I don't think it's necessary, but if you want, I will take you to the doctor after school. Will that calm you down? What can the doctor do about my zits? Well, not the regular doctor, the dermatologist. Dermatologists are skin doctors and can give you medicine to help your zits go away faster. Really? That would be perfect. Okay then, Jeff. I will make an appointment for us to go to the dermatologist today at 4 p.m. Does that sound good? That would be great. Thanks, Mom. Now, Can you finish getting ready so I can drive you to school? Okay. Just give me five more minutes. Hey, Karen. How come you eat carrots every day at lunch? Hey, Rob. My mom makes me eat them. She says they have a lot of vitamins that are good for my health. There are vitamins in carrots? Like what? My mom said carrots are full of vitamin A, which helps improve eyesight. Really? I didn't know that. Maybe I should start eating carrots. What other vitamins do they have? They also have a lot of vitamin K, which is good for blood circulation. Cool. Do they have any other vitamins? Yeah, they have a lot of vitamin C as well, which helps you not get sick. Wow. When I get home, I am going to tell my mom to start buying more carrots. You should. They are delicious. I love eating carrots. Attention, parents, kids, and anyone who eats breakfast. This is a special advertisement for a new type of delicious breakfast cereal. It is called Healthy Flakes, and it is the healthiest breakfast cereal ever invented. Yes. Healthy Flakes is the perfect breakfast cereal.
for people who want to look good, feel good, and eat delicious food. So, what makes Healthy Flakes so, well, healthy? The answer is vitamins. Healthy Flakes has 100% of all the daily vitamins your body needs in just one serving. Yes, you heard correctly, 100%. Healthy Flakes has all the vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin K, vitamin B1, vitamin A, and vitamin B12 your body needs. Does your current breakfast cereal have that? I didn't think so. So, what are you waiting for? Go out and buy a box today. You can buy Healthy Flakes in any major supermarket. Just look for the big red box in the cereal aisle. Hey, Mike, did you see that documentary on TV last night? Hey, Tracy, no. What was it about? It was about vitamin A deficiency in developing countries. Apparently, it is a big problem. Oh, really? What happens to people who are deficient in vitamin A? Mild vitamin A deficiency can cause nighttime blindness. If the deficiency is strong enough, however, it can cause permanent blindness. Oh, no. That is terrible. What causes vitamin A deficiency? It is normally caused by starvation. Many people in poorer countries don't have enough food to eat. Your body needs food loaded with vitamins to work properly. If you don't have enough food to eat, you don't get all the vitamins you need, and then your body stops working properly. What can we do to help people with vitamin A deficiencies? There are a lot of non-profit organizations trying to solve the problem. You can research them on the Internet, and you can help by donating your time or money. Hmm. I might just do that. Mom, my friend Tina from school says she can't eat peanuts because she is allergic. But I don't believe her. Is she lying? No, Dad. Lots of people have those types of allergies. Actually, your grandma has one. She can't eat dairy products like cheese, milk, or yogurt. Oh, is that why she only drinks soy milk? Yep. What other allergies do people have? A lot of people are allergic to shellfish, wheat, and nuts. What happens if someone eats a food they are allergic to? They have an allergic reaction. Some people get swollen faces. Others have itchy skin, and sometimes people have trouble breathing. That sounds scary. It is. Some people have very severe allergic reactions, and if they don't take medicine, they can die. Wow! I am not going to try and give Tina any more peanuts then. Good idea, Dad. You need to learn to be understanding of people with allergies, and never... I mean never make fun of someone because they have an allergy. Is that clear? Yes, Mom. Do you suffer from hay fever? Do you get itchy eyes, congestion, and headaches every spring? If so, Remadryl, the world's leading allergy medicine, can help. We here at Bell Star Pharmaceutical Lab understand what it's like to have bad hay fever. We all suffered from hay fever, too. That is why we developed the world's leading allergy drug, Remadryl. Remadryl has been proven effective in providing relief from seasonal pollen. When pollen or other allergens enter the body, the body thinks it is being attacked and releases something called histamines. Those histamines are what cause your eyes to itch or head to hurt. So, how does Remadryl work? Remadryl blocks the creation of those histamines. The result is you feel healthy and free. When you use Remadryl, you can live your life normally again.
So, if you want to be free from allergies this spring, look for Remedril at your local pharmacy. Oh my gosh, Peter! Is that a bee? Yeah, but just a small one. Don't worry, Jasmine. You don't understand. I am very allergic to bee stings. If I get stung, I am in big trouble. Really? Why? I am very allergic to bee venom, and I mean very allergic. If I get stung, my body goes into shock, and if I go into shock, I have to have an injection of special medicine as soon as possible, or I could die. Wow! Where do you get the injection? I always carry around this thing in my purse. It is called an EpiPen. It is a single injection of medicine, just in case I ever get stung. Oh, we better keep you away from the bee then. Yes, that would be a smart idea. Hey, Jenny, what are you reading? Hey, Terry, this is a book called Folk Medicine Remedies from Around the World. My grandma gave it to me for Christmas. What is folk medicine? Folk medicine is what they call the traditional healing practices of different cultures. The book talks about how older cultures used plants, roots, animals, and sometimes really weird stuff to cure many diseases and illnesses. Interesting. Does it talk about different folk remedies the native North Americans used? Yep. There are also chapters on folk medicine in Asia, South America. And Africa. Neat. I would like to read that book sometime soon. That part on Native North Americans will definitely be useful for a paper I am writing. No problem. I will give it to you as soon as I finish reading it. Thanks. When people get sick, they often get fevers. A fever is when your body temperature goes higher than normal. Throughout history. Civilizations have looked for different ways to avoid and treat fevers. In the West, a lot of those remedies involved putting things on or near one's feet. I know it's weird, but it's true. In parts of Europe in the 17th century, people tried to avoid getting fevers by putting leaves in their shoes. Later in the 18th century. People in England tried to reduce their fevers by putting salt in their socks. Then, in the 19th century, in the United States, people tried putting onions on their feet to reduce fever. Today, there are still people who believe putting stuff near one's feet cures fevers, but there is no scientific evidence that it does. That is why most doctors recommend taking medicine or a cold bath to reduce fever instead. Hey Jane, are you ready for the game? Hey Fred, I don't think I can play basketball today. What happened? Did you get hurt during the game yesterday? No, I woke up with a terrible leg cramp last night, and my muscle still hurts. I hate leg cramps. I used to get them all the time. But then my mom taught me a folk remedy to stop them. Really? What? I sleep with a bar of soap in my bed. What? How can sleeping with a bar of soap stop leg cramps? Nobody knows for sure, but it works. I started doing it two years ago, and I haven't had a single leg cramp since. A lot of people do it. That is really strange, but I guess I could try it. I almost guarantee it will help you. Some people think it is the ingredients in the soap that stop the cramps, but that has not been proven yet. Just trust me on this one; it really works. Okay, I will try it tonight and tell you tomorrow if it helped. Hey, Samantha, is that another new pair of shoes? Hey, Pete. Yeah, I bought them off the internet along with a new shirt and jeans. Everything arrived at my house yesterday. They are so cool. How many pairs of shoes do you have now? Um, I have eight pairs. Don't you think that is a little excessive, Samantha? Well, every time I see a pair of beautiful new shoes, 
I buy them. I can't help it. I love new shoes. You are such an impulse buyer. You always buy things you don't need. Pete, so are you. Remember last year when you got money for your birthday? The next day, you went and bought four video games. Hey, I needed those video games. Pete, nobody needs four video games. Okay, fine. I guess we are both impulse buyers. Good afternoon, and welcome to Money Saving Tips with Jim Thompson. Every day, I, Jim Thompson, give you, the audience, one very important tip to help you save more money. Today's tip avoid the impulse buy section. Most people have heard of impulse buying. But a lot of people have never heard of the impulse buy section. The impulse buy section is the section in a store near the cash register filled with low cost items. In convenience stores and supermarkets, for example, this section is normally filled with gum and candy. In clothing stores, it is normally filled with clothing accessories and gift cards. In bookstores, it is normally filled with magazines and newspapers. Store owners want you to buy these cheap and always unnecessary items without thinking. That is why they are so close to the cash register. My advice never buy anything from the impulse buy section. Avoiding unnecessary impulse buys will save you lots of money every month. Hi, Billy. Did you have fun at the shopping mall? Yeah, Mom, I did. Hey, can I borrow some more money? Billy, I just gave you $30 this morning. Why would you need more money? I know, but remember I told you I wanted to buy that book about computer programming? Yes, that is why I gave you the $30. You said you were going to use it to buy that book. I know, I know. But before I went to the bookstore, I stopped by the comic book store. Billy, did you spend those $30 on comic books? Sorry, Mom. I didn't plan to. It just happened. Billy, the same thing happened last month. You need to learn to control your impulse buying. I know. So, can I borrow another $30 today? I promise I won't buy comic books this time. No way. If I give you more money now, you will never learn to control your spending habits. You can have another $30 next month. Mom, I really need this book. Sorry, Billy. You should have thought about that before you spent all your money on comic books. Hey, Julie. What year were you born? 1995. Why do you ask, Paul? I am studying the Chinese zodiac calendar. I want to learn everyone's Chinese animal sign. Why? According to Chinese philosophy, each birth year has a different animal sign, and each sign represents a different personality. Oh, so what sign am I? You are a pig. It says here that pigs are good students, sincere, Very loyal and make good artists or lawyers. What about you? What animal sign are you? I was born in 1994, so I am a dog. Supposedly, dogs are good leaders, honest, a little bit selfish, and make good businessmen. Interesting. Let's find out what Jimmy's animal sign is. Okay. Hey, Jimmy, what year were you born? I was born in 1994. Just like Paul. The Chinese are famous around the world for their unique life philosophy. Much of that philosophy is based on one unifying idea the five elements. In Chinese philosophy, the five elements are earth, wood, water, metal, and fire. Those five elements exist in nature. And are linked to other things. For example, each one of those elements is associated with one of the five major planets 
in the solar system. Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Saturn, and Mercury. Each element is also linked to a color, direction, season, fruit, animal, and more. People are also linked to one of the five elements. Each birth year is linked to one of the elements, and it goes in a cycle. For example, people born in 1998 are fire, but people born in 1996 are wood. The Chinese believe if you understand your element's relationship with other things in the world, it will help you live a happier and healthier life. Kevin, is that a book about Chinese zodiac signs? Hey, Gina. Yeah, it is. Why? I have a question. I heard the Chinese zodiac is used in countries outside of China. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. The Chinese zodiac is used in countries that have historically had a lot of cultural exchange with China. Many people in countries like Vietnam, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan believe and follow the Chinese zodiac. What about in Western countries? Well, most Western cultures use the Greek zodiac, not the Chinese zodiac. However, there are a lot of similarities between the Chinese zodiac and the Greek zodiac. Two big similarities are they both use animals as symbols, and they both follow the same numbering system. Interesting. Why is that? Historians think that thousands of years ago, there was a lot of cultural exchange between ancient Chinese and Greek cultures. I never knew that. Well, thanks for all the information, Kevin. You were a great help. No problem. Hey, Dan. What are you doing? Hey, Jessica. I am looking at this dream interpretation website. I keep having the same dream over and over again, and I want to know what it means. What dream do you keep having? Well, in my dream, I am sitting in an all-blue room staring out a window. Outside the window, I see lots of other kids playing and having fun. Then what happens? That is it. I just sit there. I never leave and go play with the other kids. I just watch them from the window. What do you think it means? This website says that in dreams, blue means sadness and windows mean hope. So I think my dream is saying that I am sad in my present life and my happy future is on the other side of the window. Whoa, that is pretty deep stuff. Yeah, I have been kind of depressed lately. I am going to try and make some new friends and then hopefully my next dream will be a happier one. Good idea. Everybody dreams, but nobody is exactly sure why. An even greater mystery? What do our dreams actually mean? This is a question that people have been trying to answer for thousands of years. Today, scientists and doctors continue to study how our brain works and what it does while we are sleeping. Some people think that dreams can tell us about things that are happening in our everyday lives. Other people think dreams can predict what will happen in the future. Then, there are some people who think dreams mean nothing at all. They say dreams are just random old memories organized together by the brain to make a story. Today, scientists are looking for ways to collect useful information from dream experiments. So far, they have not been very successful, so we probably won't know the real reason for dreams anytime soon. Hey, Brendan, did you know that some Asian cultures believe pregnant women have dreams that tell them if their baby is a boy or a girl? No? Where did you hear that? My Korean friend told me about it yesterday. She said in Korea, there's a special kind of dream called a taemong. A taemong? Yeah. 
A taemong happens right after a woman becomes pregnant. If the dream is about bears, tigers, bulls, pigs, or other strong animals, it means the baby is a boy. And what things symbolize a girl? Turtles, flowers, fish, fruits, deer, and other delicate things. That is interesting. And is that just in Korea? I think Chinese people believe something similar, but I have never heard of anyone believing something like that here in America. Me neither. Gina, did you get a new pair of boots? Yep, I just got these yesterday. Do you like them? Gina, why did you get another new pair of boots? Don't you already have like ten pairs? No, I don't have ten pairs. I have seven pairs, and my old ones were out of date. Out of date? You only had the last pair for two months. Well, everybody is wearing these now. They're really popular at school. Gina, you always follow the latest fads. Isn't it expensive? Well, yes. I normally spend all my pocket money on clothes. You should learn to save your money. And only buy new clothes if you need them. Yeah, you are probably right. But it is really hard for me to save money. Every time I see a cool new shirt, pair of shoes, or pair of jeans, I have to buy them. You will have to learn to control your spending one day, or else you will always be broke. I know. I know. I will try. Oh my gosh, Jim. Are there peanuts in this salad? Yeah, Rachel. It is an Oriental salad with peanuts. Isn't it delicious? You don't understand. I am very allergic to peanuts. When I eat them, I have a severe allergic reaction. Oh no! What happens? My face gets all swollen, and I get a bad rash on my skin. How much of the salad did you eat? Just a bite. So I should be okay if I take some medicine. What kind of medicine do you need? Don't worry, I have it. Give me my bag. I have some pills in there. Okay, here you go. Phew. Okay, I should be fine now. I should have told you I am allergic to peanuts. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know you couldn't eat peanuts. I won't serve you anything with peanuts again. Yeah. I really should have told you. It is not your fault. Luckily, I had my medicine. Hey, Craig. Where were you yesterday? I didn't see you at school. Hey, Carrie. I had to go to the dermatologist. The dermatologist? What for? I have been getting a lot of zits on my face. My mom said the dermatologist could help. What did he say? Well, he gave me some medicine and some special soap for my face. He said in two weeks all my zits should be gone. If they aren't, I have to go back. Oh, okay. My sister used to have a lot of zits. She went to the dermatologist too. Did it help? Yeah, they gave her medicine just like you. In a week, all her zits were gone. Great. I hope mine go away in a week too. Hello, kids. My name is Frank Donahue. And I am from the National Institute of Health. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of nutrition at home. Every one of you is probably wondering what foods you should be eating. Nutrition for growing children is very important. Kids need foods which are rich in vitamins A, B, C, D, E, and K. Fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts. Lean meats, whole wheat breads, and fish are all great sources of vitamins. My advice to you: look at the label on your food before you buy it. Read what daily percentage of vitamins each food has. Make sure that at the end of the day you have had 100% of all your daily vitamin requirements. If you do that. You will grow up strong and healthy.
Hey, are those the photos from our honeymoon to Europe? Yeah, I'm trying to decide on a photo as my desktop picture. Oh, here's a nice one. That's from when we were in Greece. Yeah. I just love those wonderful salads with fresh tomatoes, onion, cucumber, and olives,、mm. and some of that salty cheese、yeah. on top. I thought the best thing about Greece was the food. That was a highlight of the trip for me. The Greek food. Yeah. Oh, here's this one. It's that market in the old town. Oh. Look at all those oranges and strawberries. Oh, so fresh. I can still remember how those oranges tasted,、uh. but. I think maybe looking at food isn't a good idea if I'm trying to work. You know. Yeah, I, I really didn't like the weather in Greece, though. I was expecting it to be hot and sunny all the time, but it was cool and cloudy. That was disappointing. Right, but what I really liked was how friendly the people were. They were so helpful and pleasant. Yeah, we went to Switzerland next. Right. Yeah. How about a shot of the mountains for your desktop? You know, when we were staying at that mountain hotel with a view of the Matterhorn.、Mm. Oh, here's the one I took that morning. I got up really early to see the sunrise. Oh, that's really beautiful. But I stayed in bed, so I didn't see it. This one might be better. I remember going on that boat on the lake. It was such a nice trip. Remember, we caught the train first and went down to the lake. Yeah. That was such a great day. Yeah. I thought the mountains in Switzerland were just amazing. I really loved being there. I wish we were there now. Oh, me too. Oh, here are some shots from England. This one is good. That brings back happy memories. Yeah, <laughs> it sure does. Oh, how about this one? That's a great shot. Oh, the coast of Cornwall was amazing. I agree. Those sandy beaches and awesome cliffs. And the weather was so warm and sunny too. We had the best weather in England. Do you have any shots of London where we went last? Hmm. Here's a good one of the Globe Theatre. I loved seeing all the actors dressed in costumes from the time of Shakespeare. It was great standing so close to the stage. <laughs> It was pretty tiring standing for three hours, though. But seeing that Shakespeare play was wonderful, and it was so funny. That was the best thing we did. It was good, yeah. But I still say the best thing for me was the food in Greece. It's too bad we didn't have longer for our vacation. I didn't like having to rush around. I wanted to spend longer in each place. Still, we had a really good time. Yes, the best. And I know which picture I want for my desktop. Which one? Ah, can't you guess? Miss Alvarez, have you been waiting long? No, just a few minutes. I like to be early. So it's Vanessa, right? Yes. Okay.、Uh, tell us a little about yourself. Okay. Well, I'm 22 years old. I'm currently in my senior year at college, where I'm majoring in business administration. I graduate in June. Okay. You graduated from high school four years ago, right? Right. What did you enjoy most at school? I was on the swim team and the athletics team. I enjoyed sports a lot, especially being on a team. Oh, if you mean what subjects that I enjoyed, I loved history and geography. I didn't like math and science so much. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what work experience do you have which might be relevant to this job? None at all. I've worked in an office, but that's not really relevant, I guess. But I'm a quick learner. I really enjoy working with people, and like I said, I like being on a team. Here at college, I'm captain of the softball team. Do you have any special skills that are relevant to this job? Well, I think I have the perfect personality for it. I'm enthusiastic and very sociable, but also, let me see, organizing people is something I'm good at, and I'm good at encouraging people and helping people. I'm a people person. Great. Why do you want this job? Because I've always wanted to visit Australia, and because it's just the kind of work I think I'll be really good at. I think this job will be rewarding and fun. What are your career goals? Oh well, I'm going to go into banking, but I'm taking a break before I start. I'm applying for jobs starting in January. Okay. Well, do you have any questions? Um, no, none. Are you sure? Oh well, maybe. <laughs> When does the job start exactly? 
And what is the pay? Good questions. Well, let.、Uh... Come in, Mr. Lee. Sorry, I'm a bit late. There was a problem on the subway, and all the trains were delayed. Oh, that's okay. Right now, Mr. Lee or Jeremy?、Uh, yes, please call me Jeremy. I'm Sally, and this is Bob. We've looked at your resume, and it all seems to be pretty good. Just a few questions. First, about high school. What did you enjoy most at school? What did I enjoy most? I enjoyed studying literature and music. What work experience do you have? Well, I work in a record store on weekends, and last summer I worked as a lifeguard at my local pool. And、uh, do you have any special skills? Special skills? Well, yes, I play guitar and I sing. I enjoy singing folk songs and pop songs. I guess that might be useful for this job. You know, singing songs with a guest in social situations. Why do you want this job? I'd like to meet new people, and I'd like to see Australia. I'd like to try something different. This would be a great opportunity for me. Okay, and what are your career goals? Long-term goals? Yes. Well, I'm hoping to go into hotel management eventually, but first I need to get experience in different aspects of the tourism industry, not just hospitality. So this job would be really useful for me. I think I can learn a lot from it. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yes, there are two questions I like to ask you. First, when does the contract start exactly? The middle of June. Fine, and if I do get the job, can I delay my return flight for a few weeks? It's because I like to do some traveling around the country. Oh, sure, that's fine.